In this lesson, we'll explore the marks our brushes can make, starting with a 12-inch round brush. You can use any color you like for these exercises. Start by pressing the brush down onto the paper, then pull it to one side and lift it away. Try making the same sort of stroke, but shorter. Next, press the brush down, rotate your wrist, and lift it from the paper. Now try pulling first, and then pressing. Again, try shorter versions of the same stroke. Next, try pressing and lifting repeatedly without lifting your brush all the way off the paper. Hold your brush sideways and drag it along the paper, or roll it. As you do these exercises, think about what the shape suggests to you, so you'll have some ideas about how you might use these brushes in producing a painting. Next, hold your brush sideways and flick your wrist quickly. Now try using your thumb to splay out the brush hairs, and again flick your wrist. Several short flicks in different directions are a good way to suggest grass. Next, stab your brush down on the palette to splay out the brush hairs at the tip, and then tap them gently on the paper. Or stab the brush down on the paper firmly to make a starburst shape. Next, we'll explore the marks we can make with a 3 quarter inch flat wash brush. Again, press, drag the brush to the side, and lift. And try shorter versions. Or you can drag and change directions. Or just press. If you hold the brush vertically and touch the tip once, or repeatedly, you get a fine line with a somewhat organic look. Good for making trees or branches. Next, try using just the corner. Gently press down, press more firmly to make a triangle shape, or press and flick your wrist to make a diamond shape. As with the round brush, you can press, rotate your wrist, and lift to get a shape that's quite similar. We can also hold the brush sideways and drag it, or roll it, You can try holding it sideways and dragging just the tip to get a shape that's straight on one edge and irregular on the other. Try holding the brush vertically and making an S shape to get sort of a ribbon effect. Again, you can splay the bristles and flick your wrist as we did with the round brush. Or you can splay the bristles and drag the brush. Now we'll explore the marks we can make with an angle shader. You've heard me describe how to make the marks with the round brush and the flat brush. So for the most part, I'm going to let you watch here and see if you can figure out how to make these shapes. Notice that an angle shader is a nice way to make a straight line, much easier than with a round brush. When you finish watching this video, you can go to our class page and download photos of the completed exercises so that you can study them and try to reproduce the marks with your brushes. You should also explore and see what marks you can come up with that I didn't show you. The last brush that we'll work with is called a rigger, 
or sometimes a liner brush because it's useful for making lines. Not just straight lines. With this brush, especially if you hold it vertically, you can make lots of curved shapes without the shape getting too wide. There's some variation in thickness of the line, but it's much easier to control than with a round brush. If you hold the brush at the very end and let your hand wobble, you'll get nice organic lines. This is also good for suggesting trees, branches, weeds, and so forth. Dragging the brush makes a nice ragged triangular shape or rough dry brush. Rolling it produces an almost rectangle with rough edges. your turn, go download the photos and see if you can make these shapes and then see what other ones you can make. <laughs>